Welcome to Dubai Real Estate Unplugged once again, brought to you by the team here at House & House Real Estate. As always, I'm Luke Remington, Managing Director for the House & House Group, and today I'm interviewing a couple of our real estate superstars here from, who both come from Australia. We're going to be finding out what motivated them to venture out from Australia and bring their expertise, and how it's been for them here at House & House, and why they're hopefully not intending to leave us anytime soon. <laughs> We're also going to be talking about why Dubai is a great place to live generally and how they've built a fulfilling life out here. So welcome, Talia. Welcome, Ali. Thank you, Luke. Thank you for having us, Luke. Great to see you. Ladies first, Talia, I'm going to go straight to you. I know you like uh, being thrown into the spotlight. <laughs> Uh, tell us a bit about yourself. You have been on the podcast before, but just like people that haven't heard, Talia, tell us a bit about yourself and what brought you. Well, we know what brought you here, Talia. Okay, um, <laughs> tell us a bit about yourself. What brought you here? All right. So I have a <clears throat> I have a um, real estate background back in Australia. Um, I came to Dubai for a few reasons, actually, Luke. What was the main one? <laughs> main one was for someone. Okay. Um, but I'm so glad that I did come, to good. be honest with you. I've um, had a very good experience being at House & House the whole time I've been in Dubai. Um, I got very lucky being connected through a, a friend of a friend mm. um, and meeting you yeah. back three and yeah, a half years ago. Yeah, remember that? amazing, actually. I do remember. remember that. And I think that was at a time that not only was was the, the real estate picture in Dubai completely different so to what different. it was now, but house and house was completely different to what it was, it was like now. I think we, yeah, yeah, we were in kind of, I was interviewing Talia in this small right. little office that it wouldn't be an office that you'd really want to be interviewing someone say, look, we're in this amazing grand office and we're a big high flying agency. Because <laughs> at, at, at that time we weren't. Yeah. So to try and bring someone in that Talia had experience, she had drive and hunger, was something that we, as a company, really wanted to secure. Mm. So I remember at that time interviewing and thinking, is she gonna pick us as a mm. eight company? Or is she gonna pick, I know there's another one. Mm. Um, also at that time, she made a connection with Jack, who's the sales manager. So so how, would, you've come over, you had yeah. that experience <clears throat> How from Australia, how has it been? Look, it's been, when I first got here, I will say it was a bit mind boggling how the industry is here. Yeah. Um, it's just a very different model, in right? In what way? In the sense that in Australia, right, you come in to be an agent. I don't know if this is the same for you, Ali, but yeah. I had to be a PA for you know multiple yeah, years before that. you even you know become a standalone agent. Here, you're a standalone agent as soon as you walk in the door. So before you get to learn the A to Z, yeah. but not have the punishment if you get the making mistakes? Yeah, okay. basically that. And also like you're kind of working under someone. So even if you list the property, you're, you know, a lot of the cut goes to them, right. which obviously has its, you know, disadvantages for sure, because you do all the work. 100%. Um, but also it's like a, right. yeah. Oh, yeah. God. yeah, so it's also a learning like experience as well. That's why they do it because they don't want just, not everyone can just be a standalone agent. So you kind of come in here, you're thrown into the deep end, which actually is a good thing yeah. because you make your own business from the beginning, mm -hmm. right? Um, but that was the first thing that I noticed. Obviously mm -hmm. then there's the, you know, um, model of exclusivity being an only model really in Australia versus, you know, here there is the option yeah. um, where one agent can obviously list multiple properties at okay. once or, you know, whatever else. So that was a major difference that I had to really learn about. So what was what what is the difference? Just go into that kind of exclusivity. Yeah. So in Australia, you saying that ninety percent, a hundred percent of properties will go with one agency? Yeah, probably yeah. ninety five percent. I would agree as well. Yeah. Right, okay, and then you, the challenge then coming to Dubai was ninety percent go with multiple agencies. Yeah. <laughs> so that is quite a challenge, Huge. right? And then the thing is, is like once an exclusivity agreement in Australia is signed. You don't, no other agent calls you, the seller, no other agent even, like you're not allowed to. Yeah. You're, you're on an exclusive basis and you're in a contract. And even an agent puts a letter in the door, you can mm. go and you know say that's completely. That did get pretty bad though mm. over the last year or two. Yeah. Right back home in Sydney, mm. we were seeing a lot of that. So we would list a property mm. and then you'd get the competitors calling them up. No, really? no, uh, go with us. Yeah, we'll offer you this, we'll offer you that. And yeah. you can still cancel within 24 hours, so. Wow, so it's yeah, changed it since i It was I've... starting to get very, very cutthroat. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's interesting to know. How long were you doing it in Australia for Talia? So I did um, three years with my family business okay. and then another three years with um, an external agency okay. um, called Bigman and Scott. So that was, uh, yeah, two different. Do you think those six years have helped you become what you've grown to become here? In 100%. terms of 
You do. 100%. In what what has that given you? If Let's say someone's coming that's only got one year's experience or yeah. no experience. <clears throat> what do you believe you've gained over those six years as an Aussie agent mm. to give you like a real head start in Dubai? Really good question, Luke. So I think basically the structure that you have to follow in Australia yeah. um, is a really good starting point because yeah. you kind of learn from, let's say, I was a PA, as I mentioned, which, yeah. you know, I list properties for my director um, and then he would obviously would share the commission or he would give me a cut of that or whatever else. But they really teach you a structure of how you should really do, be a real estate agent. Um, so that's something that I found that when coming here, it helped me a lot because yeah. I had like a really good model to kind of follow. Um, so, you know, about, you know, list calls, um, just sold calls. I know this is something we do yeah. here as well, but really like you have to do this. You have mm. to do the mail outs. You have to Non-negotiable. Like if you don't do it, you're gonna, you know. Yeah. And then as well as that, the marketing point of view as well. So my old director would tell me like, if I came back from a photo shoot for a property and the photos weren't up to scratch, you're going back. No. You need to move that toothbrush off the, off the table, yeah. like things like that, yeah. touch, you know, some tenant yeah. stuff that you don't want to. It doesn't matter. You got to get the best photos you possibly can. So again, that's another thing coming here. I was like, yeah. I need to make sure my yeah. photos and my marketing is. Yeah, it's really interesting. Up. Actually, yeah. we'll drill down on that after. Ali, give us. You've been here three months, so three you're months. about three years later than Talia. <laughs> uh, um, but give us a bit of. Tell us a bit about your background. Yeah. So. I started off in real estate back in 2015, so the year that I graduated high school. Okay. So 26 now, just turned 26. Okay. I've um, basically been doing real estate ever since. So the massive difference for me, well, coming here was very much when touching on what Talia said, the whole non-exclusivity. Um, and then basically you're doing all this work on this one property. So I've already experienced this. So it was my first ever listing that I listed here at house. Um, I had it on for about eight weeks, showing this property about three, four times a week. And I finally get an offer of full price and the owner had accepted a full price offer from another agent about three hours beforehand. Yeah. So you've done all this hard work and not been rewarded for it. So is that the same owner that I saw you put his picture as your screensaver on your phone? <laughs> that's, Cause that's this, what this, did you hear about this? No. Time? I saw Ali, I was <laughs> walking past manifest. him about half eight in the morning. We just got into the office. He's got his script. He's clicking his phone while he's talking to me. And this picture of this, this gentleman's on his phone. So I'm assuming it probably was a family member or his father, his uncle, his granddad or something. Um, and, <laughs> I think, if I remember rightly, Ali, he, he was wearing traditional kind of was, UAE yeah, clothing. Yeah. So then I'm thinking, okay, maybe. So I then did say, okay, who's that? And he said, that's the, the seller. That's my seller. That's my seller. And that's I'm like, seller. what's all that about? So what was that about? So, so, <laughs> so we'll go back to that. So um, yeah, that was, a, that was me working on my first deal. So my first deal, I had an offer of full price. The owner accepted and then move the goalposts on us. So I find that a lot more happens here as well, Okay. more so than back home. So the owner will tell you, get me this price, you get him that price, and this is what happened in this instance, the owner then ended up saying, no, I want an extra 50K. Yeah. Uh, we went back to the buyer, we got him an extra 50K, then he turned around and said, well, we're not gonna pay you at that, mm. at yeah. that com anyway. Um, and then the next day he changed his mind and said, no, nope, I want an extra 40K now on top. So we've gone back and forth with this buyer. The buyer's offer has been accepted on two different occasions and it makes it hard for us to yeah. really go back to this buyer yeah. and just say, I'm sorry, the owner changed his mind yet again. So what I did is I, <laughs> I saved this photo from WhatsApp, <laughs> put it as my screensaver and looked at it every single day. Okay. So that way it was like manifesting. I manifested this deal to go through and, and I kid you not, two weeks later, he called back and accepted the offer and the deal went through. Amazing. I okay. saw his face every morning, every, every well, like, single night. I, I've seen lots of brokers and you know, I've done it a long time. I've never seen I've that never strategy. Seen that. So <laughs> Look, it worked, right? Yeah. It worked. I'm a big believer of manifesting. You put something in front of you, you look at it enough, you say it enough, it will happen. Yeah. So. No. I could put as my screensaver right now. Then <laughs> you, moved, you moved here because of a gentleman. You don't want to upset him, Sally, with another gentleman's face. But anyway, what I, the vibe I'm kind of getting from both of you that I just want to pick up on, Sally, you're going back to say, okay, you've done something probably, I don't know, you've done a, you've been out to a photo shoot, you haven't moved the toothbrush mm. or the bed, mm. the cushion hasn't been mm. done properly. Yeah. You've done an eight out of 10. Yeah. You've gone back the owner or whoever the principal is in the office yeah. is said, go back and do yeah. it again. Yeah. Here, 
Mm-mm. that's not really going to happen, right? No. no. So what happen. is the difference between Aussie agency and Dubai agency? Are you saying they're more thorough and they're more dedicated to the cause th- or, or it's more professional? I would say a few things. It's probably a little bit more competitive in Australia okay. to really, really stand out as an agent. Mm. Um, and I'm not saying that in any way, shape or form yeah. against anyone here, but I think, you know, sometimes here because it is a, a no commission, you know, yeah. you come in with the no salary, whatever else, there might be a lot of people that come in and maybe don't make any money. Yeah, They come. And they go. Yeah. Whereas in Oz, they have to obviously, you know, agree a salary. They have to agree a commission structure. Yeah. <clears throat> um, not everyone's going to get the job. Okay. Right. Do is do you get salaries? Are they common in Aussie agency? It depends on your position and title. So okay. yeah. as a PA, which is yeah. how we all start back home. Yeah. yeah. You either start as a receptionist or a PA, yeah. whether it be or a property rentals. manager. Yeah. 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 Whether it be yeah. rentals or. Okay. Um, or in sales. So you, the, the as soon as you start, if you're 18, 19, 20, whatever it is. Your salary is very, very low. Mm-hmm. I think I was getting paid thirty-two thousand dollars Australian, yeah. which is okay. about what you know, sixty, seventy thousand dirhams a year, yeah. okay. um, um, and no commissions. Yeah, uh, that was what for me anyway. Mm-hmm. That was my my breakdown. I know other agencies were paying commissions, but I wasn't getting any commission. I would sell properties, I'd list properties, and I'd get nothing. So yeah. very, very unrewarding yeah. in a sense, but very, very cutthroat at the same yeah. time. So there was very, very high expectations. This is where I learned for my drive for making the amount of phone calls that I do because at this place that I was working at, you had to make 210 connects per week. Not phone calls, but actually connect. What if you don't? If you didn't, then... So this was a really big agency that I was working at. There was over 40 um, sales associates that worked within, or PAs that worked within this um, office. Um, Once a week, we would do a whole training with all the associates and that's where you'd have to read out your numbers out loud in front of the directors. So it was a training session, but they'd also go through the week's numbers. So if you didn't hit your numbers and if you were close, so if you hit like 207, mm. they would say to you, you couldn't make an extra three. And then if you were far off, they'd give you a warning. Say, if this is, happens again, okay. you're out. Literally, like it was, you do this or otherwise you're gone because it's a non-negotiable. It's what their expectation is. And then it's a model that they follow mm. because they know it works. Okay. Talia, what would happen if you didn't hit your calls here? Honestly. I don't know if it was um, as tough as what Ali is saying, to, to be honest, with my situation. Okay. Um, I guess the thing is, is that I had, you know, my brother yeah. um, as my first... <laughs> Okay. Director, yeah. and then which I had, is usually with family, you mm. usually get it a bit more tougher. That's that's yeah. what yeah, I find. Yeah. Love, yeah, 100%. Well, my brother asked me the other day. Yes, yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And um, but then also with my second director, he was very particular, okay. and he was one to just go. If you don't do this, just just walk get out. out. Just get out. Like mm. you, if you can't meet my expectations. I've been here for his just celebrate his twenty fifth year anniversary at, okay. at the company. Yeah. Been there a long time. Yeah. yeah. He's got a lot of, yeah. He's got obviously a high reputation, a, re- a reputation to uphold, and clients that literally know him from. You would go to an auction, and he was like a famous person. Right. Okay. You know what yeah, I mean? The yeah. Face yeah. of the community. Yeah. Mm. And touching on what you said earlier, yeah. it's, it's hard to really establish yourself. It's a very tough market to get really well established. Mm. So there is a lot of high expectations. So yeah, making sure that there is the photos are picture perfect, mm. making sure that if you're dressed, you're dressed in, in the correct manner. When you're speaking to clients, you're speaking with a good amount of energy, you're speaking mm. well. There was just so many different factors that really shape us. Oh, I can tell from Talia yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, it shapes us into the agent that we are or the broker that yeah. we are today because it you have to go through all this and then it becomes second nature to you. Yeah. Like yeah. It's, it's like a sixth sense. Yeah. You, know, you have to make this amount of client phone calls. You have to make sure that the photos are picture perfect. You yeah. have to uh, get in at a certain time and you have to do this, you have to do that. So mm. that's, I've been That's in that your way. mindset, right? Yeah, that's how it is. So. And yeah. everyone else is doing it, right? Or yeah. every, there's so many people in that office that are even better than yeah. you or doing more numbers than you. And like, it's a competition, right? Yeah. And that's a big thing for agents, even here. Yeah. Yeah. We're all very competitive, but even more so, I would say. So if you're coming with this kind of expertise, you know, you've been in Australia, you've mm. had these kind of really strict rules, strict rules and guidelines, mm. it's putting you above the competition here. Is that what you would honestly say? Without trying to be kind of like, you're not trying to 
you know, make yourself sound better than you are. But yeah. you would see the competition here. If you were talking, if someone from Australia is listening to this, would you genuinely say that the competition is weaker here than it is there? Yes. Yeah, I'd, I'd say something along those lines. To an extent. To I, a certain degree. Yeah, I guess the thing is that I would say is that like... People aren't going to be changing the toothbrush or moving the cushion <laughs> or, you yeah, know, making 210 connects 100%. and worried about the job, right? But not every agent like that is is like that back home. Yeah. Okay. Like, let's, let's, let's be real. Yeah, there no, is, I agree. In every single area, mm. there is one real standout agent yeah. back home, okay. maybe two, okay. and then the rest are just very average and mediocre. But wouldn't that be the same at House and House or Dubai? Wouldn't you find, you know, you've got that kind of 20% mm. of your brokers doing 80% yeah, of business, but give or take? Yeah. 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 Oh, look, from what I've realized, and I've been in real estate now six, seven years, right? So mate, eight years, I think, actually now, so eight years. So what I've seen is everybody sees real estate as a certain way from the outside. Yeah. It's an image, mm. you, you dress good, you, you drive a nice car, you earn a lot of money, yeah. you wear a suit and you, that's it. Like nice they, That's all they think it is. Yeah, yeah. nice watch as well. And yeah. once they actually come in and see how it is from the inside and you you, know, you see the, the down and dirty work that you actually have mm. to do, the, the amount of calls you make, the um, the unrewarded hours that you do, mm. like it's sometimes you you, know, you get in at eight and you don't leave till nine ten p.m. at night, yeah. and you're not getting paid because you're on a commission only basis. Mm. But it's it's seeing the, the the bigger picture. You're doing it for all, for the future. Um, I've seen a lot of people come and go in the industry. I'm sure you yeah. both yeah. have. Yeah. You've been here a long time as well. Yeah. So people see real estate as uh, real estate as it's an easy thing. You come in, you you make some quick cash. There is no quick cash here. So a lot of people realize that. It's a long game. It's hundred percent. It's a long game. You you plan. You today's work reflects in three months' time. You can't do something today and you won't get you won't get paid on it tomorrow. So, mm. you know, I, I've always worked in that way. You're always working. Today impacts three months. So if you do don't do anything today, three months' time, don't expect anything. Yeah. And then yeah, if you have a good month this month and you not so good next month, well, that's going to impact three months later. So yeah. yeah, we've seen more Australian agents come here. Now mm -hmm. that could be down to, we speak to Josh Vegan quite often, mm -hmm. you know, that could be down to the kind of the market in Oz, maybe not doing as well as it once did. Yeah. It had that peak and it may be coming down. We probably feel that, um, I don't know, on the back of COVID, people are thinking, let's do a bit of traveling. Mm -hmm. I know you guys like to to travel and, you know, go, fly around. Go to Europe all the time. So, you know, maybe whether it could have been the US or UK or something now, mm -hmm. people are thinking, well, look, Middle East is on the map. Yeah. What would you say to people if they have got experience, whether it's your six years, Ali, or it's your eight years, Ali, what yeah. is the difficulty about walking in? You know house and house, so let's talk about house and house. What is the difficulty about walking in? Is it difficult to get in amongst your teams? Is it difficult? Listings is quite difficult, right? No. This the listing not? part, well, okay, when I first came, obviously, yeah. you touched on this earlier, it was a very different market when yeah. I first came. Yeah. You know, you could list 30 houses, yeah. right? And, you know, sit there waiting for one of those. <laughs> Course, so, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Right. Um, whereas now I'm on the complete flip side of that market. But I would say, which I was going to say earlier, here, it doesn't actually, you know, you the long game, what you were just talking about, Ali. Yeah. You have to probably prospect one client for about three, four years before they'll maybe, you know, list with you because but, they have to choose one agent. But right? this is what you was drilled into you yeah. when you're training there, mm -hmm. which a lot of people that are coming from other regions to Dubai don't have. Yeah. So you're kind of... It's like you've it's been set up, yeah. right? Like yeah. yeah, and that's what you do so well. You have to. You have to. Do you it. have to because they won't list with you because they have to choose one agent, right? Yeah. So they interview five agents. Yeah. They yeah. go to their house. It's a job interview, literally. Mm. You're sitting there and they're. What are you going to do for me? Yeah. Like, because they're going to pay marketing as well. Why right? you? Yeah. They have to. So pay. how how long are you speaking to these Dubai owners before they're selling <laughs> with you? <laughs> Luke, I have once I've sold a house three times in the. Three, t three times in the last three years. Which is one, on, one year, every one year. Okay, so, so that's one of them. Yeah, because people come and go in Dubai, yeah. right? Yeah, Whereas in Australia, Mr. Over. Mrs. Jones would buy it, and they then, have one property. Yeah. Here, the average person. Yeah. How many properties does the average person have in yeah. Dubai? Yeah, exactly. Not right. one. Happy today, gone <laughs> yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Tax free money today. Yeah. Had enough. Well, well they're all flipping, or yeah, there's yeah. just like a. It's a different model here. A house isn't really their one asset that there's, has all their money in it, which is I would say. A lot, the average person in Australia would have, you know, a property and maybe an investment property, maybe, but not, you know, what yeah. people have here, which is five, six. No, so if like you've that. if you've got less time, you're telling me that your owners in Australia usually move in, they stay there, they have their kids, they bring up their kids, you know, it's the family home, they, mm -hmm. they could be there 10, yeah. 20 years. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is you've sold a property three times over the course of the last three years. Yes. 
how do you build a relationship, Talia, with someone in such a short time, amount of time? Because surely he gets he gets to speak to all the other agents. How do you actually get a connection? Well, I guess it's back to the model that I always learn. You know, what I sell in the community, not just like calling and being like, are you selling? Which I think there's a lot, a lot of people that yeah. might just go, hi, are you selling a house? Okay, bye. Yeah. Like that's the conversation. Yeah. It's just like so not give them really, information. Yeah, give them information, touch base with them. Obviously, we had a stand as well. So I was yeah. seeing them there a lot, which obviously mm. helped the a lot. The stand being... The, the ranch's community the, the ranch's centre stand. Okay, right. Yeah. <laughs> the ranch's stand, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, just touching base with people, you know, not just to make it seem like I'm calling them for something of my own benefit. I'm actually calling them to say, oh, what's going on here? Oh, I've seen you done the renovations. Mm. Oh, the garden looks great. Oh, the fence you put up yeah. looks great. I've just sold uh, the one behind you, like just a catch up. Yeah. Text messages here and there. And they actually do come to me for like rental stuff and, you know, other stuff. So that's what I kind of want to build is that I'm your agent for everything, even though I can't give you a rental figure or I can't do anything, you know? Do you think that you put more into it than a lot of agents. So let's say, do you do things, okay, so until the client buys from you, mm. you don't get paid. Yep. So do you, and Ali, you were talking about this kind of work that goes unseen that mm. you don't get rewarded for, because not yep. every client buys. Correct. I think at the moment, we've worked out 98% of the leads that we've had into House and in House this year, we've not sold to, so we sold to 2%. We do get a lot of leads. but. What would you do for your client, Ali? Would you, are you literally, I don't know, they viewed it, they then get on a plane, they leave, but they say, Talia, can you go back and can you take a video? Talia, can you measure the distance between the front door and the swimming pool? Mm. Talia, is this what would be common questions before people have bought homes? Yeah, some people. I think there's a lot of overseas buyers now that are yeah. coming in, so they have all different, you know, ways of buying or they're used to a different model or you know they're a bit confused on how it works in Dubai that they you know have three agents contacting them on mm. the same house which mm. can be confusing for some mm. um, and then just building that trust like I'm, I try and be really honest with my clients yeah. like if I feel like you know if I feel like there's a property that is going to work for them I'm going to you know try and you know guide them in the right direction yeah. if I feel like there's a property that you know I'll take them to it and they say their comments like what do you think about this i'll tell them my thoughts i'm not going to just try and sell someone something for my own yeah. benefit it's also yeah. about you know their own yeah what have you found ali last three months what would you say has been the most difficult thing for you to adjust not just in real estate but in life in dubai it's going to sound silly girls <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite, not quite um yeah it's going to sound very silly Go on. Uh, as in australia you you keep to the left when you're walking okay Every single time I walk past somebody, I keep to the left and here you keep to the right. So the person opposite me is stepping to the same <laughs> side as me. Right. So this is and it, right? Guys, if you're moving from Australia, <laughs> the only thing that you need to worry I about you not, that is, is right. yeah, which side. You're not even talking about driving. You're on about walking. I'm walking. Thank God. I'm walking. Yeah. Thank God he's really? talking about walking. Um, God, life yeah, is easy. Life has got to be good if that's the worst <laughs> thing. Uh, is That's, there anything else that you could say? Let's say someone is doing well in Australia. Yeah. They're in a good company. They get support. They got their family living around the corner. Yeah. You know, they're going to move and they're going to get on a flight. Yeah. It's a big, you know, it's oh, a, it's, it's, a, a big, lo it's a long it's way, massive. and it's there's a, a lot. Thing. You know, it's a lot of distance. People don't always kind of fall into kind of Dubai. And, you know, we've moved away, and you're missing family, friends, yeah. etc. Is there anything else other than walking on the wrong, wrong no, side of, course, of the pavement, of course, pavement yeah. that you would say <laughs> is going to like heat? Yeah, of course, hundred percent. Like currency to, to say to to say that nobody's ever been homesick here. Like any time yeah. you ever leave your family for a certain period of time, and maybe more so for me, I'm a big family man. I'm one of eight kids. Yeah, so massive family. You've got like, your Arab roots there, right? So massive, massively. Yeah. Like dad's yeah. like one of fourteen. Mum's one of thirteen. Yeah. So like massive extended family. Yeah. Um, but Alpha, like my my family was very very tight knit. So leaving my family to to come and live a sixteen hour flight away from all of those has it's it's been difficult. Of course, um, I've missed already three birthdays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've only been here for three months. Um, I've missed Mother's Day. So these things, obviously, you. You miss, you, you sit down and you reflect when you're on your own. Like whilst I'm at work, I don't think about a single other thing. Yeah. But once you take that time off, that's when obviously uh, it, it, it plays on your mind when you're alone and whatnot. But expect to, to be homesick. Expect to, to miss being around your family or your siblings or if you have a partner or whatever it is to, to miss that. But you, everybody comes here for one reason. It's to to really make something out of themselves. Nobody moves to Dubai for 
for the sake of it. It's yeah. an expensive place to live. Yeah. It can be. Yeah. Um, so better than Sydney, right? I think so. <laughs> I think so. And Cheaper. Yeah. There's Simmer. parts. There's actually parts. I, I, th- I feel it's cheaper to be honest. Like okay. mm. local food is okay. a lot cheaper than than anything back home. Like local part. food's extremely Sydney. cheap. Okay. Petrol back home now is like two dollars fifty a full, like a, a liter. Yeah. So yeah, I was filling up you know, twice a week. You, you're paying about one hundred and thirty dollars, one hundred and forty dollars, if that. Okay. Um, on a full tank of petrol each week. So yeah, you're spending over two hundred fifty dollars a week on petrol. Like. What is it here? It's like cost me thirty eight dollars for it's my so full cheaper, tank yeah. the other day. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's so yeah. cheap. Um, and yeah. I live in Business Bay in a fully furnished one bed Burj Khalifa view, canal view. Something like that back home is going to cost you, yeah, you know, for a one bed at, at least, at least, yeah, you know, call it two thousand dollars Australian a week. Mm. What's that? Over a hundred thousand. I'm paying seventy five thousand dirhams. Uh, so a, year. Per, yeah, a year. Yeah, a year. So what's the compa- What's the monthly? Uh, what monthly, would be the monthly difference between Australian dirham for someone that hasn't got a? Uh, about two dollars forty. So uh, one dollar Australian is two two forty. Okay. Um, dirham. So, so a monthly. On monthly, I'm paying. I think it was uh, worked out to be. It's going to be like out. eight thousand dirhams. Let me quickly do the, the math. I'm, I'm not. I, I dropped maths. No, I'm just trying to give someone an um, idea. So and while you're I'm, doing that, Ali, I'm going to fire over to you, Talia. Tell me, Talia, culture, you know, you're coming into a company, there's 100 uh, salespeople, there's over 50 leasing people, there's 30 marketing people, there's support, there's like, it's, well, just under 300 people in total. Yeah. What is that feeling like? Can it be, is there a lot of pressure? Look, even when I came here and it was only 40 people, it was a bit daunting, to be honest with you, because I was like, oh, my God, like, you know, it's like you're in a different country. There's all different nationalities. I guess something I was used to is mainly, you know, Australians. That's, you know, you just see Australians every day. There's, you know, people from all over the world, which I actually really like, to be honest with you. I like that there's so many different cultures here. You learn so much about, you know, different people and which you don't. I didn't really in Australia. I was kind of in my little bubble, Mm. you know, with my brother or, you know, with my other work. And I think it's really good. But I would say I was going to say something earlier about like people that are considering moving here if I can. Mm. I think like one thing I would say is that and I don't know if Ali would agree with me on this is be patient mm. because you come in here and you're like, mm. oh, my God, you know, it's my first month. I haven't put anything on the board and, you know, everything's sale. quite transparent yeah. here with like what mm. people are making, obviously, with all their figures being available displayed. for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Be patient is one. Number two, I would say is that it's 100 percent worth it Yeah. because I came here, what? during COVID, right? Yeah. I was that would have been tough, Talia. Yeah, it was, it was a strange time, but yeah. I still made more money. I was only working for six months of the year because we had a lockdown yeah. and whatever else. And I made more money here in that six months than I did in a long time. In Australia. Yeah. You know what, if, before you said that, Talia, it's funny, mm. if you'd said to me, what is the one thing, not just Australian agents mm. might suffer with it, it could be UK agents, mm. it could be American agents, a lot of them do not have patience yeah. now. No. They see these ridiculous figures going up. We've seen an Aussie guy join the company in the last three DH. months. Yeah, DH has joined the company. Um, he's written seven million dirhams in three months, which I don't know. Quakes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah which like I, so so what, what, what would his take home be? A million dollars. I've already okay. worked it a million out. Do- okay. <laughs> I think we all but have. anyway, so <laughs> anyone seeing that saying, "Well, he's done it. Why can't I do it?" A hundred percent. But at the same time. It doesn't don't always work it. that yeah, way, right? It, no. What would you, um, what would, when you, you've now been here, what would you say is something that you're really trying to like, okay, my training, other than lifting weights, Ali, what would you say, <laughs> what would you say that, okay, right, I need to train myself to get better at this because of the adjustment in Dubai compared yeah, to very, Australia? That's a very good question. So um, I was doing quite well back home. So the model of a real estate agent back home is, yeah, you work your way up from a PA to a standalone agent. Once yeah. you're a standalone agent, obviously everything's on you. You have yeah. to do everything. You then build your career up to a certain point where you start to get extremely busy and you have it doesn't make sense to continue doing the non-dollar productive things. So you hire an associate or a PA. Yeah. Um, I had two PAs working for me um, and one of them was more so a buyer specialist. So he was working with all my buyers and the other one was focusing on all my admin kind of things and doing all the non-dollar productive activities. So that way I was only focusing on prospecting, mm. nurturing my database and literally listing more properties. Okay. And as soon as my buyer specialist would get me an offer, I'd take over from there, yeah. get the buyer up, get the owner down, do the deal, everyone's happy, make it happen. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing I've had to adjust to is getting back and working with buyers more so. Now I had to obviously take a step back and uh, it took me, missing out on a couple sales with buyers because I wasn't 
as proactive um, to really understand that, okay, well, I really have got to work with buyers more. Um, it's not just about getting listings. Back home, it's just you get the listings, they're going to sell because you're doing open homes, you're getting the inquiry online and whatnot. So um, what the biggest thing for me was, was yeah, kind of taking a step back. You need to work with these buyers. You need to understand what the buyers are after. They're speaking to yeah. tens of 20s, yeah. 30 yeah. agents a day. Yeah. Um, how are you going to give them a service to then for them to just want to work with you? Um, and essentially, they're, they're paying you. They're your client. Yeah, that's what like I was going to say. It's, it's, it's more a flip. So, that's yeah. the problem because in Oz, that's the your biggest, seller's paying you, right? Exactly so right. So was, you don't really care about the buyer. The to buyer's be fair. Like, like, you're not looking up. Genuinely them. speaking, you don't really. But you're not like, you know, their buyer's going to buy either with you or with another agency mm. or whatever else. If they come and buy your property, great. But if they don't buy your property, the owner's right. the yeah. owner, you know, like yeah. you're doing everything for the owner yeah. back home. But now it's. It's, it's 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 trying to find that happy balance, balance in yeah. that happy medium in between because essentially you're, you're, you're getting paid from both of them now. Yeah. So you can't tell the buyer, well, listen, this is what my owner wants. You pay this or you mm. don't buy it. Yeah. Because they're going to be like, oh, I'll stuff you. I'll go buy it from another agent. Yeah. The exact same property. So yeah. you've got to work with them both in a specific way to make it to make it work, to make both parties happy. Yeah. Um, that's been the biggest thing I've had to adjust to cool. from, okay. from back home. Tell you what surprised me with you. You obviously you, you're constantly at the top end of the board in the company. There's Thank lots you. of brokers. You. How, we, um, <laughs> how do you juggle that work life balance? You obviously make a fair bit of money. You've obviously got you know you've been in a relationship for a long time. Mm -hmm. How do you balance that between you know there's lots of nice restaurants, there's lots of things to do on a Saturday, but you've also get calls because it's a busy time. Yeah. So how and I don't, how is that? Reason, I just. I can't stop working. Like I okay. try and tell myself not to work. Like, all right, Sunday yeah. I'm not going to work. But I just I'm you still gonna, do it. I just I can't help myself. Yeah, it must mean I love it, right? Yeah. It must mean. <laughs> I have to, like, otherwise, I would just yeah. be like. Is it? Is. is it? What if you didn't do it? Would you be still at the top end of the board? Uh, I don't know. Basically, I think look, work life balance for me. I am lucky in the sense that my partner also has a very high powered job. Yeah. So he works a lot. So um, you don't feel as guilty if no, you're out. Okay. So we're both on our laptops at night. Like I might be adding buyers. Okay. He's on emails. Yeah. You know, he's speaking to people late at night. So I guess that does help when you're both on a, a very similar level. Yeah. Um, we're not really going out all the time to brunches yeah. and things like that. It's not really. What okay. We do we do? But yeah, time? even regardless of you mm. not doing that, you are in a position now that if you want to jet off for three, four weeks, you yeah. could potentially do that. But you still choose. I feel guilty. Okay. Like even I'm going to I'm going home in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And you've already. I'm like, oh, what's going to happen? <laughs> I don't want anyone to take my clients. Yes, that's exactly. Like. So that's that's, that's yeah. my that's that's where my headspace is at as well. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. That's how I think. I feel okay. Well, if I'm having one day off, yeah. how much opportunity am I missing in that one day? How many so calls am I not going to make yeah. on that day yeah. because? Yeah, because what I have a sore throat. <laughs> you know isn't what I mean? like that? Isn't it like the secret source to success that actually, if you didn't have this inner desire to have that hunger to do that deal, that you would take the time off. You wouldn't care that you're taking the time off, and undoubtedly you would lose that client to someone that's the hungry person. Mm. Yeah. 100%. So it is a secret source, right? One hundred percent. Okay. You have to. You have to really be on top of your your clients. And it's funny what Ali was just saying, actually, because I funnily because I was a PA and you you had mm. someone that was doing this, right? My focus and I've always been strong with buyers. Like if you ask Charlie and he does the figures on yeah. who I sell more to, I'm like ninety percent buyers. Yeah. So I've always been stronger with buyers yeah. and sellers because of coming from Oz, so that was my, kind of trained by, that was what yeah. I was meant to do. I was meant to call the buyers. I was meant to get to the offers from the buyers. Yeah. That was my yeah. forte. Yeah. And yeah. I came here with that strength. Yeah. Ali. Tell me. I've you got the figures, by the way. Okay. <laughs> the rental figures. The rental figures. Tell us those rental figures. It's quickly. about a four, five, between four to 6,000 difference per month. In dirhams or? No, in Australian dollars. Difference. Difference. Okay. In rental wise, like, Wow. Rental wise back so you home, can, you could be spending you know, fifteen hundred. So you could, so what you're basically saying I mean, is you could actually live a cheaper life doing what you're doing now yeah. here, which would be similar to what you were doing and in Sydney. I'm, I'm living in business base, so it's not like it's yeah, yeah there's there's a lot there, nice, a lot right? more areas where it's a lot or more. Or if you're cheaper. posh they call it central business district. There you go. It depends well, on what you call <laughs> business district. <laughs> there you go. Sounds a lot better, right? It's yeah. like Chelsea or Fulham in uh, in London. Yeah. If you're posh you say Chelsea yeah. Um Ali where do you see now. yourself where do you see yourself in one year that's a very good question do you see yourself in dubai yeah 100 percent. do you see yourself in real estate well i would i don't see myself in anything else to be honest really 
Uh, but in one year, there's there's a lot that I want to achieve. There's um, yeah, I'd love to obviously become a, a senior mm. um, within the company. I would like to be the face of Dubai Creek Harbour. Yeah. And eventually start to also sell villas in District One. Yeah. That's that's the goal. That's yeah. the plan. You have a large, you have a large personality, and you've got full of energy. Mm. Um, so I think that I doubt there's many people that can meet you once and <laughs> not want to meet you twice. You know, you, you certainly give the impression that if I want to buy a property, I would speak to you and just your enthusiasm and. I don't know whether you'd put a picture of my face on your phone, but, uh, you know, it depends, it depends on how hard of a time you give me, Luke. <laughs> but um, I think, you know, that that's probably one of your, your key skills that you've, you've just got, you know, you just got it. Talia, where do you see yourself in a year? Nowhere else, to be honest. Where, in, in terms of Dubai? I'll be in Dubai. Yeah, you love it. I love it here. Okay. I'm so happy I came, even though I came here, I didn't, okay, obviously you've mentioned it, Luke. I didn't come here to be in real estate here, <laughs> basically, but that's okay because Everything happens for a reason, yeah. Um, and I'm very grateful, mm. and I'm very grateful that I yeah. met you guys and you yeah. know the connection because you yeah. know I had a few agencies on my yeah you did yeah I remember on my radar and then yeah. you know mm. came yeah. to you guys and as yeah. soon as I met you and you know Josh Feek and obviously yeah. had a connection, connection there yeah. I was like this is this is my place and I haven't looked back. So. Sales management directorship, yeah. what is it? What are you thinking? Yeah, I think that would be my next move. I would really like to have a team okay. um, underneath me. Okay. I'd love to help other brokers. Yeah. Um, I would love to, you know, do a little bit of traveling as well yeah. in the meantime. You yeah. know, that's something I want to do. Try and let go of my, you know, control. <laughs> yeah. Freak. You're only young ones. Yeah, yeah, I know. You're only young no, ones. No, and, that, and that's it, right? That and that's yeah. what I think, you know, with the teams, there's, you know, there's people I've spoken to who are doing fabulous numbers, ridiculous numbers, that don't want a team. They don't want to have to, mm. to you know, make sure that these, you know, because yeah. when you're starting, you do need to have, you know, you, if you're not the person to get in 4-9, you have to have someone telling you to get in 4-9. Yeah. Because not everyone's like you two. Yeah. So they don't have that get up and go. Yeah. So, and and it's not necessarily just because you're a good biller, you want to go down that team route, but mm. obviously you know what you've done, Tally. You've obviously six years. Obviously it seems the kind of the next step, but while you're doing as well as you are and you haven't got anyone necessarily I to know. answer to and you can get your hair done at 3 p.m. of today. <laughs> <laughs> Jack. <Five. laughs> Guys, um, thank you ever so much. Let's um, leave it there. We hope this gave our listeners an idea about life in Dubai and how rewarding it can be in Dubai real estate. If they have, if anyone is listening from, I don't know, not just Australia, but any part yeah, of the anyway, world really. that's got it's any chilling. questions, you know, real estate is pretty similar. Um, there's lots of people, you know, the Dubai um, immigration, people are just coming in and, you know, it's just getting so busy. The so roads are absolutely... Well. Like, I'm getting messages from Ding dong, in, right? Yeah, yeah Australia. from back home, how's it All like? Yeah, like, yeah. What yeah. Do do? I think, you know, um, I was going through my exit and now we're back into it. But, <laughs> but one thing, this is the ridiculous thing is people, it's... It, we sound like we're just trying to sell it. You don't, we don't need not to even, sell it, do we? Yeah, they, we no. We're not, don't, if someone's not, doesn't want to do it, they don't do it. But Dubai, is, there's not really any down things, right? No. We've As got a bit of hot weather coming up in the next couple of months. Just, just a little. Yeah. But other than that, <laughs> it's like everyone talks about the benefits of a sauna. Mm. We've got an outdoor sauna, right? Yeah. So, um, 100%. Better than the cold, to be honest. I'd much oh, rather I prefer that, the heat than the cold, to be fair. Yeah. Indeed. Right. So, wherever you're from in the world, if you've got any questions, by all means, drop them to us. You can find Talia. She's on Instagram, I'm sure. Is Ali? Oh, um, you can drop us your CV <laughs> at careers at house and house. You can visit us on our website. Thanks and bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.